let's start this discussion of holonomic constraints and non-holonomic constraints so let's discuss holonomic constraints first suppose if i have a system where this is a coordinate system and we have n particles like this and let's say this is first particle and then the position vector of the first particle is given as r1 bar and for the nth particle it will be given by rn bar so we have this uh, system of many n particles okay then if you can relate these position vectors like this okay and possibly time like this as a form of this equality then that constraint is still is uh, supposed to be a holonomic constraint okay so this equality if you can show then that holono that constraint is a holonomic constraint so we will see some examples based upon this okay so it is not necessary that always time will be there as an input of this function okay let's see some examples suppose we have a wire okay a wire like this and on this wire there is a bead okay which is passing on the wire like this passing through the wire like this okay so now this bead is constrained to move only along the direction of the wire it can never leave the wire it cannot go jump away of the wire okay so now let me construct my coordinate system this is my coordinate system okay and let's say this is alpha and this is my x axis this is y axis and this is origin now we can describe the path of this bead as y is equal to mx plus c this is a simple linear equation now c is zero but the y intercept is zero here so y is equal to and what is m m is slope which is tan alpha as you know already so this is y is equal to x tan alpha now if i take y minus x tan alpha then it is zero which is of course of the form of uh, this which i have discussed just now this is the form of this equation so this is a holonomic constraint expressed in this form for a bead let's see another example okay so another example is an example of a pulley or a atwood machine okay some people call it pulley some people call it atwood machine okay so there is there are two blocks of different masses this is m1 and this is m2 and there is a tension in this string and one of the mass is going down and another is going up okay and we will always assume the string is always taut okay so that is tight okay so let's say the coordinate which describes the position of m1 is x1 and my origin is at this point the point where the pulley is attached and this coordinate is x2 like this so now the constraint here will be x1 right this must be constant or you can say this is equal to l which is the nothing but the nothing but the length of the uh, length of the rope or length of the string okay so this is another constraint x1 plus x2 minus l is equal to 0 so this is in the form of an equality okay so this is a holonomic constraint and one interesting interesting thing is that you can take a derivative with respect to time and you will get v1 plus v2 and since l is constant this is equal to 0 so this is a, a yet again another constraint okay this is the constraint on the velocities and what more that you can take the time derivative with respect to uh, sorry you can take the time derivative again and get a1 is equal to minus a2 okay so these are the accelerations obviously this minus sign says that one block is going in another direction okay so this is a constraint basically okay another example we can see is that of a rigid body constraint for example we have a body like this this is a rigid body what does it mean just we can see here this is x this is y and let's say we have ith particle here and we have jth particle here and the position vectors of these two particles are given by ri bar and rj bar 
now the rigid body is the one in which there is no relative motion between any of the points which are inside the system or on the surface of the system okay so here we get the distance by which formula rj bar minus ri bar gives us the distance between ith particle and jth particle okay so these modulus that means the magnitude must be some constant so goldstein uses this cij to represent that so this is a yet again expressible in the form that i have discussed earlier this is minus cij this is equal to zero so this is again the same form f of r1 bar r2 bar and t equal to zero so this is also an holonomic constraint okay so you can say you can see this constraint like this another constraint can be of a dumbbell suppose you have a dumbbell system okay dumbbell means like this and this is a rod over here okay there is a rod like this and this rod is not uh, it is a rigid rod so any uh, these two masses m1 and m2 will have a fixed distance between them so if this is x1 y1 and this is x2 y2 the coordinates then obviously the distance between them y2 minus y1 whole square plus x2 minus x1 whole square will be constant okay so this is another type of constraint okay so now let's talk about um, different types of different type of uh, system okay we can think about any other constraint like this for example we have a wedge here triangular wedge and on this wedge we have kept a mass m and let's say this angle is theta and mass is coming down and there is no friction assume that there is no friction then again if i choose my coordinate system like this this is x axis this is y axis then y is equal to x tan theta again the same form as we have seen for the bead so y minus x tan theta is equal to 0 yet another constraint you can think of is again the wire and the bead system but in this case the bead is confined on the circle okay circle so this is our origin okay and let's call this as r the radius of the circle okay so if this is a two dimensional system this is a two dimensional by the way this is x axis this is y axis then you can say that x square plus y square is equal to r square this is a constraint the bead is only constrained on the circumference it can never leave that circumference so this can be represented as x square plus y square minus r square is equal to zero this is a holonomic constraint again now let's talk about something called as non holonomic constraints non holonomic constraints are not expressible in the form that i talked about earlier so they are not expressible in this form okay so they are rather expressed in form of inequality for example you have a object okay which is defined uh, so which is on the surface of this okay and this let's say this is a z axis and you can always say that you are always sure that this object will be above the surface so here if i take this point as origin that is the z is zero this on this surface then z is always greater than zero or equal to zero is always the position of this particular particle x y axis x y uh, coordinates may be different but there is a constraint on the z axis on the z coordinate that it should be always greater than or equal to zero now this point of this kind of constraints are not expressible as a unique as an equality but it is they are rather expressed as inequality another constraint we can say that of the system of n particles which is we n gas particles which are confined in a box so here the um, suppose this is the x direction this is the y direction here the x coordinate of all the particles are confined only in this region 0 to l and y coordinate will be confined in the 
region 0 to B. So breadth is B and the length is L. Obviously there is no two dimensional gas here. You can add up another coordinate for example ZI. Maybe it is C. So this is an inequality. Okay. So this is not equality. So we cannot see this constraint as expressible in this particular form. Okay. So this is an inequality. So such constraints are not holonomic constraint rather they are non holonomic constraint. And another example you can think of is a handkerchief okay, or a cloth. A piece of cloth is there and you have two objects or two points on the piece of cloth. Okay. Now these two points uh, will have certain distance between them. Now this piece of cloth can be crunched or crumbled okay so that the distance can vary but it is having a certain maximum distance maybe when you stretch the cloth to its maximum limit then these two particles will always be below that particular distance. This is also expressible in such a form but it is not a holonomic constraint it is a non-holonomic constraint. 